Hello. This is the first step in a set of videos where we are going to build uh, a GUI based program that calculates the volume of a cylinder. Now doing the first step a second time, and the reason why is because if you're following along on my website, I actually took exercise one and copied in the final version of that into this program and then modified it. In the first video, when I did this, I just did it from scratch. But I realized some of you might be following along, and sometimes it's helpful to see how I might take this code and strip it out. So the first thing I asked to do is I pasted in all the code from the previous example. And what I've said is essentially we want to create a definition, and that definition or a function is called calc vol Use cylinder, cylinder. So the first instruction is I say create this function and take all of this code and paste it in. So that's what I've done. So this is the program working. I have a comment down here I'm going to take out. So essentially what I have now is that this program. And I'm just going to come in here and clear this up. Oh, I just have to pause and get the right terminal up. And here it is. And let's run that program. So I'm going to say Python, oh, click in Python 3, GUI, step B. Okay, and nothing happens. The reason why nothing happens is because I've taken all of the code and put it inside a function. So a function is a small segment of code that can be called upon run. And there's three things we need to know when we deal with functions. We need to know what it takes, we need to know what it does, and also slash what its name is, and we know what it returns. So in our case, we run this program, but it doesn't actually go into the function. It looks for the place to start the program. And with Python, it starts the program finding the leftmost piece of code that it can execute that isn't a function. And I always like to put that at the very bottom. So I'm going to put here print start program and then I'm going to call that program. So I'm going to say calc well, cylinder and then I'm going to say print and program. So let's save this and let's give this a run the screen. Oops. And it runs through. So let's pause this for a second. Now I see why it ran wrong. Let's come back. We want to run B. And you'll notice it says start program right here. And that's because if printed start program and then I've invoked the function. So what that does is the program stops, jumps all the way back up to here and starts to run this down. So it's going to run essentially my last stage. What is your name? My name is Paul. Four or five. You can't see the bottom so let's drag this up a bit. And zero zero it exits. And when it exits it comes to the end of the program which is here. And then it exits the program and jumps back down to where it was called. So the next thing I ask you to do is I ask you to strip everything out and remove the while loop. So let's do that. So I'm going to get rid of all of the print. We're going to get rid of all of that. I'm going to get rid of all of the taking inputs. So let's get rid of this. I'm going to get rid of the while. I'm going to get rid of the ending part. I'm going to get rid of the print. All that I'm going to leave here is the calculation. And then I have two tabs here, which is a problem. So I'm going to highlight all of that and hit shift tab. And so what this has done for me is it's stripped it down to the really most basic piece. And that is, I want you to calculate the volume of a cylinder. And let's put in, the, let's get rid of this else here for a second, because there's no code. All right. So the question is, take a look at this and ask yourself, do you think it's going to run? And let's try. So let's come back over here, let's clear the screen, and I get an error. What the error is saying essentially is 
it's trying to check this if statement, if radius is greater than zero. But you'll notice no value of radius has been defined. And this is where, where we think about what we want to pass the function. And I want to pass the function a radius and a height. So I'm going to pass the function a radius and a height. And now if I save this and I run the program, let's see what happens. I get another error. So let's, let's think about what this error is. What they are saying is it's saying it's missing two positional arguments, radius and height. So if you come down here to where I call the function or invoke the function, have I given it anything? No. So when it actually runs the function, it's expecting two things. So let's give it three and let's give it four. And let's save this again. Now if I come over here and run this, it doesn't crash. But I don't get anything back. So let's figure out why that is. So the reason I've, I've gotten nothing back is because you know this nothing's printed. So let's just for now, let's just print volume. And I'm going to add an else statement here, and I'm going to print bad data. So basically, if I pass something in that isn't valid, it's going to print bad data. So let's save this. Let's give it another run. And what I get is 113.1. And the reason that happens is because when I invoke the function here, I pass the 3 into radius, I pass the 4 into height, and then it executes the program. Those are both valid values, and so it calculates volume and prints it out. Now the thing with functions is that usually you don't want to print the result. Usually if you're designing a function that someone might call, you want to do a calculation and then pass something back. So whoever uses this function can do whatever they want with it. So how do we do that? Well, we do that by using a return statement. A return statement will essentially stop the pro will basically stop where it is and then send something back. Um, so I'm going to return the volume. Now the question is, what do I return down here? So one of the things we often do as programmers is if it's a situation where the value can't be negative 1, we'll return negative 1. And what this is a way of doing is indicating that the program has had a problem. And then whoever is, is using this function can decide what to do with that. But if I do this, I have to actually make sure I specify that in my function header. So I'm going to write a quick description here. So this, this function takes radius and height and returns the volume. If the past values are invalid, it returns negative 1. And this makes sense because sure enough the volume can never be negative 1. So if someone was to use my function they could read this comment and they could understand what's happening. So if I save this program and I give it a run, it runs but I don't get anything back. Because what I have to also do is I have to actually when I return the value capture it somehow. And the way we do that is use an assignment statement. So by setting up result equals, and there's the name of the function, the function gets invoked, it calculates the volume, and then sends it back and stores it in the variable result, which I can then print. So if we save this, we give it a run, there's my value. And that's it for step one. You'll notice looks almost exactly the same as step one when I did it from scratch. I wanted to do it both ways because I wanted it's, I wanted you to see how I actually stripped out the code from exercise one and used that to kind of start with this. Now the one thing I would do here, to be honest, is I would actually do pow radius two. Why not use a function? I hope this video helped. Have a wonderful day.